Yeah, I'm on too. Okay. So welcome everyone to the uh, November 2015 Transmart Community Call. Uh, I'm Keith Nangle, the European Community Manager for the Transmart Foundation, and I'm filling in for Kevin Smith, who has hosted these meetings in the past. Um, as usual, we're going to wait about five minutes for people to join before we get into the uh, content. While we do that, I'd like to remind everyone that these meetings are recorded for offline viewing, and you'll be able to find the uh, recording on the either on the Foundation's YouTube channel directly, or there's a link on the Foundation website. And the presentation materials will also be available on the Foundation website. Um, we hope to have a few minutes at the end of the call for questions and discussion. If you'd like to post questions to the GoToMeeting chat window uh, while we're uh, going through the material, you can do that. We'll take up as many of them as we can at the end of the meeting. So we'll begin in about three minutes. All right, let's get started. The agenda today uh, focuses on uh, a few developments, primarily from the 2015 annual meeting. We'll have a quick recap from uh, Keith and myself about the annual meeting itself. And then we'll talk a little bit about some of the issues that resulted from feedback, including an update on the development uh, strategy and process installation issues, which we heard uh, quite a bit about uh, during the annual meeting. Um, Keith will talk about I2B2 and the Transmark Foundation. And then I will talk about the new wiki, uh, which is due to be released shortly. And then we have a guest today, Dr. Andreas Kramer from the Information Technology for Translational Medicine Institute in Luxembourg, who's going to give us an introduction to that organization. And as I mentioned, if we uh, have a few minutes at the end, we'll take uh, 
questions and discussion. So um, since the last time we met, uh, the 2000 annual meeting, 2015 annual meeting was held in Amsterdam, hosted by the Netherlands Cancer Institute and the Trait Project. Uh, they were excellent hosts, uh, provided uh, beautiful facilities. Um, and we had over, we had 165 attendees. Uh, here's a picture of most of us, I believe. Um, one thing I'd like to recommend uh, to those of you who were not able to attend the meeting is to check out a TEDx talk from Dr. Bas Bloom, who gave one of the keynote speeches at the meeting. Unfortunately, we were not able to record his, uh, his talk because of some uh, confidential patient information that he didn't want widely publicized, but um, he's, give, he's given a TED talk that's one of the more popular uh, TED talks out there. And on the next slide, I have a link to uh, the TED talk on YouTube. It really was one of the most compelling uh, talks I've ever heard. He uh, described a network of uh, care facilities for Parkinson's patients that has been set up in the Netherlands and is now being replicated elsewhere in the world. And I, th I really recommend that you uh, check out his TED talk uh, just to get a flavor of the kind of uh, work that he's doing. Um, so we had, a, as I mentioned, we had over 160 attendees from over 60 different companies and institutions. Um, we have provided links to all the presentations and posters and videos uh, on the Transmark Foundation website. So if you check out that web page, uh, you, can, you can view all of the presentations if you weren't able to make it yourself. Um, there's a post-meeting survey that is uh, due out shortly via email. Please keep an eye out for that and send it back and uh, help us improve next year's annual meeting. Um, there are some key take-home issues for the management of the Transmart Foundation, and I think I'll let Keith Elliston uh, speak with, to these. That sounds great. Thanks, Keith. Um, I think the annual meeting was a, was a fantastic success. It was great to get everyone together there uh, in Amsterdam. I think the facilities were tremendous. I also had a number of really interesting comments from people um, who uh, had the experience of walking through the hospital with us, actively working on, on personalized cancer care, to come to the Transmark Foundation meeting and seeing how closely that is to the patients. I think that was a tremendous experience, and I want to thank Garrett and Raymond and, and the rest of the crew uh, at, at the uh, NKI for, for that effort. Uh, in walking around the meeting, um, one of the key things we did is, is really try to listen to the community and, and see what the key issues are uh, out there for the community. Uh, number one, I'd have to say, is, is the roadmap. Um, there's a lot of confusion over what the current roadmap is, and what we need is, is a very uh, clearly defined roadmap uh, with a clearly defined development and release cycle. This is something that we've been working on through the Quality Working Group and through the establishment of the Transmart uh, PMC, the Project Management Committee. Uh, and uh, John O'Hare joined us uh, just before the annual meeting uh, as our VP of Engineering. Uh, John is, uh, is working with us as well, and uh, we've established uh, what we think is a good roadmap and a good process for, for managing this, uh, the, the engineering of the platform. Uh, that work you'll see a little bit uh, coming up. But that work will also be presented uh, to the Prismi, uh, Prismi group uh, at the end of this week as well. So you'll see a lot of, of effort from the foundation in defining and managing the roadmap for the platform. Uh, a second key uh, issue that, uh, that came up at the meeting uh, was related to installation. In fact, I had uh, three different people come up to me and ask me about key problems with the installation. And I grabbed uh, Terry uh, Weymouth and, and Peter Rice and we went and talked with people. Uh, and we, we learned something uh, very important in that process, and one is that um, if you're not installing uh, one of the virtual machine images uh, or one of the Docker instances that's available, um, then you're installing from, uh, uh, from source, and that source install is intended for developers. What it does is install the current master branch or actively developed branch of the code base. Uh, that can explain a lot of the problems both with the installs and uh, with the platforms that are being installed because those are not the release branch. Uh, we're going to go and take you through what we're doing to correct that. 
uh, and make sure that all uh, current installations will point to the release, uh, or at least there will be well-defined instructions that point to the release artifacts, and that those will be digitally signed uh, so that you know they're coming from the foundation. They are the active supported uh, elements of that, etc. So that was a key take-home uh, from the meeting as well. Uh, we had a large discussion at the annual meeting about the wiki. Uh, we redesigned the wiki, um, got some really good feedback from the community, and we're re redesigning the wiki. Uh, Keith is going to take you through what we're doing there. Uh, but we're working to make sure that this is well aligned with the needs of the user community and the developer community. And finally, uh, another key outcome uh, is uh, a, a great exploration of ITB2 integration and really linking clinical information more closely with uh, and more integrally with the uh, high dimensional data that we're working with in the platform. Uh, so we had a number of great discussions with Paula Viak, who was there, and gave another great uh, keynote presentation. Um, and uh, we're working uh, to bring ITB2 and, and Transmart uh, closer together as we develop our roadmaps and, and bring those platforms forward in the future. So these are sort of the four top level uh, key take homes for the management team from the annual meeting. There's lots of, of other take homes. If there are things that you feel that we didn't hear uh, in the annual meeting, please come to, to one of us, uh, Keith Nangle or myself, um, or one of the, the code fellows or content fellows. So Terry, Peter, uh, and Keith uh, can help you with those. Uh, but these are the things that we've taken home from this and we'll be working on as we go forward in the future. Keith? Okay. Thanks, Keith. So um, a couple of slides on the development strategy. Um, first of all, uh, this has been true for a while, but just to reiterate that our strategy is to move from a research grade to a commercial grade system. And partly to that end, we have John O'Hara, who has joined us uh, as engineering manager. And John, if you're here, let me see if I can unmute you. Um, no, I don't see him on. Um, but basically, John's background is the, um, the telecom industry. And so he has experience building and engineering uh, systems that require very high uptime. And that's the sort of uh, discipline that, that the Transmart system needs right now. And so let me jump in on John's behalf, oh, Keith, okay. just for a second. Sure. So um, uh, I've been looking for someone uh, to come in at the executive level to help us uh, really with this strategy of moving from research grade to commercial grade. Um, I interviewed a, a large number of people uh, that had that experience uh, here in the Boston area, uh, but John struck me quite uh, quite well because not only uh, does he have a fantastic background um, as a VP of engineering, uh, CIO, CTO, and CEO for a number of telecommunications companies. And telecom, in my mind, is where reliable and big data uh, really got their start uh, in the software space. Uh, but he also has a personal experience with personalized medicine. He's uh, helped several family members go through personalized oncology processes. Um, and his wife is a, a practicing physician. Uh, he's very passionate about medicine, about translational research, and about helping us deal with the kind of issues that, that are, we're seeing and going from a research grade platform to commercial grade. So we're really excited to have John on board. He was at the annual meeting. I think just about everybody at the annual meeting got a chance to meet John. Uh, but you'll see, be seeing a lot more of him as we uh, progress with our roadmap and as we progress down this development path. Keith? Okay, thanks. Um, so basically, the, the strategy that we want to uh, follow from here on out is to focus on scheduled releases in order to make this a much more predictable uh, process for people. So approximately every six months, we will plan on a, a new feature release. Um, the first one will come in the first quarter of uh, it'll be version 1.2.5 in the first quarter of 2016. Um, and it may take us a little time to get uh, get to a, uh, an absolute six month release cycle, but that's the goal is to make this uh, uh, a much more predictable process. And so that you have some sense that uh, new functionality will make it into the system uh, in a reasonable time. We're also working to define, to better define the requirements for a contribution that is to be included in one of those six monthly releases. So it's fine to have uh, uh, development work going on, but in order to be integrated into a Transmart Foundation official release, we want to make sure that the quality elements are all there, and that includes 
appropriate test scripts and the data to go with them, uh, both technical and user focused documentation, any installation and database upgrade scripts, and all of that, uh, all of that surrounding uh, material that that really helps to make a new feature production ready. Um, furthermore, anything that uh, is to be included has to be integrated with the current master branch. We've had issues in the past where things are developed against something other than the master branch, and then they can't be readily integrated into something that is a release that we can put out to everyone. So that process is something that uh, we're going to to uh, enhance in the 1.2.5 release in particular, and then refine and make better as we go along. So uh, I think we can all look forward to that. Some of the key dates that we're looking at at the moment, as I mentioned, version 1.2.5 is currently in alpha testing. We are shooting for a release in the first quarter of 2016. Uh, there's not a focus on new functionality in this release. It's really more around bug fixes, uh, working out, uh, improving the development process, and most especially improving the quality. And so this release will not go out until the project management committee has uh, signed off on it and established that it meets the quality criteria that we, that we want to enforce going forward. Um, following that, version 1.3, uh, is due out in the third quarter of 2016, so roughly the six-month uh, schedule that we talked about. And there we uh, plan to automate some of the test and build processes um, and further refine the installation and especially the upgrade process. So in the past, we've had uh, cases where an upgrade requires you to, for example, reload all your data. Um, that's just not, uh, that's a non-starter for most production environments. And so that's, a, that's an enhancement that uh, brings us a step closer to that uh, commercial quality goal. Um, the other thing we wanna address in that release is, the, uh, is a re-engineering of the ETL processes. Um, that was probably the second, uh, second biggest pain point that we heard about at the annual meeting after the installation. Um, I think it's been a pain point for a long time, but um, there's engineering uh, approaches that we can apply to that so that we have a, a, essentially a single way of loading data into the system that uh, works with all data types. Um, as part of that effort, we also are uh, trying to provide better, uh, what we're calling transmart ready uh, data sets that are all curated and ready to load using our improved ETL processes. So the goal is that in the future, you'll be able to uh, browse a menu of available public data sets and load them quite readily into your system. Um, that's been a, a more difficult process than it really should be in the past. Um, so all of that, in addition to some new functionality, uh, so for example, SmartR, which uh, many of you may have seen at the community call a couple of months ago and, and in other venues since, um, the goal is to get that from its current state into a production ready state and uh, integrate it as part of a, an official Transmart release. Um, following that, uh, the next uh, milestone would be the first quarter of 2017. And that is where uh, some of the bigger and more ambitious engineering re-engineering efforts would uh, first appear. So I2B2 integration uh, primarily among them. Um, and essentially uh, some amount of database restructuring, uh, potentially database federation functionality, use of HBase or other NoSQL databases for handling genomic, high volume genomic data. Um, so those sorts of major re-engineering efforts, refactoring efforts, uh, would first appear in the first quarter of 2017. So just to go into a little more detail on the installation issues that we've uh, mentioned a couple of times, um, as, as Keith alluded to, uh, we heard quite clearly that the complexity of the installation process is really a barrier to greater adoption and use of Transmart. Um, the VM is, is fine as far as it goes, but it's really not suitable for 
large production installations where you may want to split the database server from the front end and so forth. So the installation instructions that are currently found on the wiki, um, as Keith mentioned, they're really, they were written uh, kind of with a developer uh, audience in mind. And if you're not careful, you can, you can end up with incompatible versions of the, ver of the various components. Um, and I've had some experience lately. I've uh, received a fair number of emails lately from people who have tried to install the system. And when they try to run it, they get uh, errors that indicate that something has gone wrong with the, with the installation. It's not the, not the software per se, but something about the installation. And in many cases, these are, these are coming down to incompatibilities that result from grabbing you know, a development branch from this component a development branch from another component, and those two things have not yet been synchronized. So what we want to do is create a new set of instructions and a, and a set of scripts to install the current production release, which is version 1.2.4, uh, and those scripts and instructions will be available on the new wiki next week. So uh, we'll talk about the new wiki in just a bit, but um, this is a high priority item um, there are a number of people out there who are waiting to try and install the system, and it will be much easier uh, once once this work is done. Um, so just to make the point, there's there's going to be uh, with with this strategy, there will be one set of signed artifacts for each release that is supported and authorized by the Transmart Foundation, and just to uh, reduce confusion, uh, there may be other releases of Transmart. So for example, by the eTrix or Trait projects, those are not supported by the Transmart Foundation. They're supported by the, uh, by the projects themselves. And just a warning that some of the version numbers may be the same or similar, um, but the Transmart Foundation will, will sign one and only one set of artifacts for each release just to, to, reduce the confusion that, uh, that we've run into in the past. So I mentioned the Transmart Wiki. Um, I'm not sure how many of you actually spend much time on the existing Wiki, but when I joined the foundation a few months ago, um, it was one of the things that struck me uh, right away is that the current Wiki is not terribly well organized. Uh, it contains obsolete and what I found to be confusing information on, on some topics. Installation being a good example. There's lots of different uh, options. If you, if you search for installation on the wiki, you'll find lots of uh, different approaches to installation. It's really difficult for a new or potential user to figure out which of those is, is the best for them to follow. Um, there are cases where we have information that exists on both the foundation website and the wiki. And one of the things we'd like to do is reduce that duplication because in some cases uh, the information has not been synchronized. So some of the larger goals of the new wiki are to provide a better and easier topic-based uh, navigation scheme. Um, and to, as I mentioned, to remove duplication of information between the, the website and the wiki. So the question then becomes, well, you know, how do we, how do we make that choice? How do we, decide whether a particular document or type of information belongs on the website or the wiki. And based on feedback at the annual meeting from the community committee uh, uh, attendees, um, the consensus was that the website is a good place to uh, present foundation-related business, news and events, uh, and information for new or potential users, people who are really just trying to find out what Transmart's all about and whether it's suitable for them. Um, that's not to say that you know, we won't have links to the wiki for more detailed information, but for the most part, the foundation website is the place to go to get general information and to explore the system. Whereas the wiki uh, is the place for, is the home for information that's really of interest to people who are currently using the system, people who are contributing to it, developing it, and it can certainly link back to the website where appropriate. But one of the goals uh, there is to make sure that the content that's on the wiki is reviewed on a regular basis. It's, uh, there's clear accountability and ownership of the pages, and 
that um, it doesn't tend to accumulate obsolete information. Um, we will make sure that uh, previous releases have a, have a footprint of documentation for those who are still on those older releases, but it will be, uh, those, those sections will be uh, better organized so that you don't have to wonder whether a page that you're looking at applies to the, to the version that you're currently running. So uh, one of the, the challenges is to make the transition smoothly because the current wiki is still being updated on a fairly regular basis. Um, so what I plan to do is, as of next week, the standard URL, wiki.transmartfoundation.org, will be re redirected to the new wiki. Um, the existing wiki will be available as a link from the new wiki, and all the current content will be preserved for those who, who uh, need to refer to it or use it as a starting point for the new wiki. But new content will only be added to the new wiki as of that time. Um, we'll, what we'll do is we'll uh, migrate selected content from the old wiki, move it to the new one, but most content, uh, most of the new content will, will only be created on the new wiki. But in the meantime, I'd like to encourage you to go ahead and browse the new wiki as it stands today. It's not fully populated, um, but I'd appreciate any feedback you'd care to give. I've got the URL here in the presentation um, and expect that to be the default wiki as of next week. Um, and like I say, the, the new installation instructions will be one of the, uh, one of the first uh, things to go up there. So as Keith mentioned before, there's quite a bit of discussion at the annual meeting about uh, the integration or reintegration of I2B2 and Transmart. And I think I'll uh, let him uh, speak to this one. Thanks, Keith. Um, one of the key things that uh, we're pretty excited about is, is working more closely with the I2B2 uh, platform. Uh, there are a number of key enhancements. We had a hackathon um, about 11 months ago now uh, that showed that we could do a, a deep integration of I2B2 and Transmart. Um, over the last uh, few months, we've been working towards and have a proposal for this integration that will be part of the uh, first quarter 17 release. Uh, we're in the process of getting that funded, uh, having that work uh, begin, uh, hopefully in the first quarter of 2016, so that it will be ready for the first quarter of 2017. Uh, and we're working together to, uh, to, uh, to bring our, our groups a little bit more closely together as well. So this project um, is a proposal from uh, Paula VX Group at, at Harvard. Um, we have uh, a target for that one quarter 17 release. Uh, we still are looking for some assistance in funding this project. Um, we have a shortfall right now, probably about $200,000. Um, so if your group is interested in being a part of this and helping fund this, uh, I'd appreciate that. Just drop me a note. Or if you know someone who else who would be interested in helping to fund that. Um, we're also working on a, a joint I2B2 Transmart Foundation meeting uh, that will be hosted by Harvard here in Boston uh, in June 2016. Uh, right now we're looking at either Monday, June 20th or Thursday, June 23rd um, and uh, bringing together, this is uh, during, there's an I2B2 meeting that is being hosted uh, there uh, on the, the Tuesday and Wednesday and there's also a personalized medicine conference in the same space. So it would be a very interesting um, conflagration, if you will, of, of ITB2, Transmart, and uh, Precision Medicine. So uh, keep your ears posted. Uh, we'll have more information on that uh, as we go forward. And uh, uh, we're also looking into, uh, which I haven't mentioned here, is a, a monthly get-together with the ITB2 group uh, with a, a sponsored video conference, et cetera, to have uh, something on the order of a, a journal club on features. That's something that Paul and I are, are working on and we hope to have in place uh, starting uh, early in 2016. So a number of things are happening. Uh, we're pretty excited about it. Uh, I am, at least. And uh, you should see more things happening in the near future. Thanks, Keith. OK, thanks, Keith. All right, well, we're actually uh, ahead of schedule here, which uh, might be good for Andreas. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Andreas, Dr. Andreas Kramer from the Information Technology for Translational Medicine Institute at the uh, University of Luxembourg. Uh, Andreas, are you on? Yep, I'm on. Okay. Um, do you copy me? I do. I can hear you. Um, okay. So would you like me to uh, run the slides from here? or? 
That would be lovely. Yeah, I think that's the easiest. Maybe as uh, in the moment you you are setting up the slides, one one sh small little correction. Uh, I'm not at the University of Luxembourg, so we are an independent organization. Okay. All right. Shall I start? Can you see those? Okay. For me, yes. Okay. Good. All right. So maybe yeah. Let me first thank uh, you, Keith, and and also Keith Ellingson for uh, having the chance to to present a new member of the uh, Transmart Foundation, and I'm really honored to to be able to do so. Um, so ITTM stands for IT for Translational Medicine and is a very young uh, spin-off from the LCSB here, uh, an institute in Luxembourg, um, some of you, most of you might know. And the uh, focus points of uh, this presentation as well as of our work is uh, around data curation, integration and hosting services as it's being written on, on that slide. And if I can have the next slide, please. As I said already, we are a spin-off from the University of Luxembourg, especially from the LCSB, uh, the group from Reinhard Schneider, uh, most of you know, certainly, and uh, we are Société Anonyme. And uh, as you can see, uh, ITTM is not a member of the eTrix IMI project, but because concepts and ideas uh, basically span out out of this, uh, IMI context, therefore we are calling ourselves also a spin-off from the IMI eTrix and we are in close discussion with uh, Scott and other members from uh, from the eTrix consortium, but again we are not an actively part of, of eTrix, but we consider ourselves as being a uh, spin-off uh, conceptually as well as physically from the University of Luxembourg. We do have also uh, yeah, uh, attracted funding from an investor who is labeled on the on the uh, bottom right. So we got a strategic investment from the Post Group here in Luxembourg, uh, which is not only dealing with uh, yeah stamps and these kind of things, but also with the infrastructure, very modern infrastructure within Europe. And I will come to this uh, in a later slide because this is basically one of the major reasons here why Luxembourg, we believe, is one of the best places to do this in in Europe. If I can have the next slide, please. Thanks. So our vision is really we aim to, to become a preferred partner uh, for innovative bio-IT solutions, mainly focusing on pharma clients, biotech, uh, for biomedical data, and uh, maybe two words or three words on the team, the founding team we do have, as I mentioned already, Reinhard Schneider. Most of the founders are part of his team. Uh, you might know from one or the uh, other uh, interchange or, or basically communication you had also during the annual meeting. And it's really a team which has a track record in cooperation, especially with industry. And uh, we think, we believe, and I'm pretty sure uh, other people will subscribe to this. This is an added value and really an assess, uh, uh, an, uh, an asset we, we are really happy to have. And if I have the next uh, slide, please. The other uh, Asset we do have is what I mentioned already, Luxembourg, uh, who as a country has invested a lot in infrastructure and ICT infrastructure, not necessarily with the mind to have biohealth uh, activities in the first place, but we are adding uh, that to the initial financial sector support on the ICT. So the infrastructure can, of course, be used for all. The latency is very low. The, uh, the fiber routes we do have are excellent. And I'm really proud to, uh, to uh, say that in Luxembourg, there are a lot of tier four secure data centers where I was very surprised to learn that Germany doesn't have tier four, at least from the tables I saw recently. And this is definitely, as I said, an, an added value and unique selling point for Luxembourg, thinking as well that if we talk about data hosting in the biomedical field, uh, patient information, clinical data, this, of course, is something which is of uh, utmost importance for, for customers as well as companies dealing with these data. So if I can have the next slide, uh, I would like to go a little bit with you into uh, the direction how we uh, plan to create added value for our customers. Next slide, please. Um, as we all know, dealing with this uh, within this field, the data we are dealing with is usually clinical laboratory assays. Maybe this is on the far right top. And uh, on the other side, there's much more information and clinical data types we, we do have to take into considerations. 
And uh, this goes, of course, into biological processes, gene regulations or pathway information, if you like, literature, expression data with or without anatomical um, uh, linking. Uh, more and more next generation sequencing data is coming uh, into the clinic and is being used in a routine way, especially if we are considering family studies. The linking of molecular imaging uh, data with the omics uh, data is uh, becoming more and more pressing and interesting. And the next two uh, icons I, I borrowed from, number one, from the IT for Future Medicine uh, flagship proposal a couple of years ago, as well as from a publication from uh, Lars Juliensen and uh, Søren Brunacke recently, where uh, it was clear that we do need, if we go into the uh, area of in situ models uh, of diseases or patients, we do need that information in a structured way in order to really build the models. and keeping in mind that data alone is not a value. We really have to make the data usable and we have to keep in mind that maybe a data point alone is not important and we do need the contextual information and maybe also take into consideration what is being uh, listed there in the equation, what happens from birth to the moment the patient or sees a, a sensor or the doctor, what happens uh, or what is the influence by the environment on this patient and uh, the, or on this person, which derive or uh, guides and then basically basically also uh, leads to the phenotype the doctor is then seeing. So the next slide, please, uh, not as a surprise, being part of the Transmod Foundation, uh, we do have a focus on data curation and we do this in, uh, in a very structured way. We do use as much as possible standards, so CDISC is being listed here, and we do use the environment of, uh, of Transmod. So for us, data cleaning, data QC validation, harmonization, standardization with the uh, uh, proper domain expertise is, is a major plus and a very important thing. Next slide, please. Um, as it's been said already multiple times by me, and as you can, can guess already, uh, we are member of the Transmart Foundation uh, and, and part of that community because we really believe in this community effort and we believe that this really is a great way forward to solve problems we have already since years and ages and we really need some, some great solutions to that and we are really proud to be part of the community and uh, really st uh, will start uh, actively contributing into the various themes uh, Co uh, code as well as content. And uh, as I mentioned already, we do have data curation knowledge management experts. These are the founders, but more people here in Reinhard Schneider's group as well. We do have the industry and public research background, domain expertise, as well as being a uh, part of previous projects. Etrix I mentioned already, Etionomy is another IMI project where my colleagues were part of this. If I can have the next slide, please. So the uh, value proposition we do have is really improving value and lifespan of the biomedical data by standardization and industrialization of the data curation, making it more automatic as much as possible. And, have, and then on top of it also building efficient client interfaces, software, databases in terms of, you know, where do we add uh, where things are not yet uh, in, in, in the best shape. But this, as I said already, in very close collaboration with the community, it's not the idea to build yet another uh, wheel. We would like to be part of, of the big wheel, which is the Transmat, and, and hopefully, and I'm, I'm sure, going in the right direction. So we do provide solutions for data quality, for comp uh, reducing complexity, prolonging the data availability, by hosting, by archiving of the data, and uh, I mentioned security aspects are key for us. And of course, this is all in order to ease the data analysis at the end of the day. And if I can have the next slide, please. It's summarizing what I just mentioned in terms of uh, services and solutions we are providing as a company. This is data curation of not only clinical data, lab data, but multi-omics data. It's also doing the data integration into Transmart. Uh, either the setup as well as the hosting, then the data analysis, uh, visualization tools, and here certainly visual analytics is something where we are dedicated and uh, especially keen on. I mentioned data hosting and platform setup. Uh, with our partner, The Post, in, in Luxembourg, we can provide tier 4, tier 3 data centers if required by the customers, uh, as well as multi-layer access control, geo-resilience. Uh, this, I think, is uh, really, really unique. And in terms of data archiving, of course, this uh, same infrastructure can be used then uh, if needed and if requested by the customers. And uh, the next slides uh, quickly summarizes 
the tools and the uh, curation efforts we are doing. So we do the integrated storage, the curation integrative analysis as well as that. And this is also uh, a reason why uh, the interaction with the LCSB, the Luxembourg Center of Systems Biomedicine for us is very important. Uh, disease maps, how do you visualize information in a clever way? This is an area for research but we should also get this into a commercial setting or being uh, uh, in a in a way being used uh, not just as a as a you know not documented undocumented uh, tool but really in a professional way and manner and that is what we would like to to drive with the with the colleagues from the LCSB as well and uh, with this i would like to spend just one more minute on uh, a next slide please or two slides actually if you go on the next one where we are want to go to what is um, for us, Transmed is a strategic activity, actively working together with members of the foundation for us is, is one of the real cornerstones. And on top of this, we would like and, and also started already um, acting actively in standardization efforts and I listed here the ISO TC 276 where we got already uh, actively involved and I know this from my, my previous life. It's an uh, initiative, an ISO initiative uh, in the uh, systems biomedicine arena as well if you like where things like uh, analytical methods where data processing uh, technologies, annotation, etc., they are uh, efforts to, to find common standards in order to really help and, and build a an, uh, unique selling point for not only research organization but also for Europe or worldwide. And uh, we got already also, or we became member of the biohealth cluster here within Luxembourg really to derive these concepts and ideas not only in a, as a smaller startup but also then on a larger picture Europe or even international together with the Transmart Foundation which again I can only be uh, saying again and again that I'm really happy to be part of it because I believe this is really a great effort and uh, contributing will be will be a lot of fun and with this the last slide is summarizing my contact details if anybody is interested and I hope I stick to my 10, 10 minutes some uh, Keith was giving me and with this I would like to say thank you and maybe there are some questions I can immediately uh, answer. Thank you Andreas, that was very good um, and welcome again as a member of the foundation. I think ITTM brings some really key capabilities uh, to the foundation. Uh, um, I have the, uh, the questions open. Uh, is Would anybody like to uh, to ask Andreas a question specifically about ITTM before we go into a more general discussion. You can raise your hand or type into the chat window. I see one hand up there, Keith. Um, let's see, we have, um, yeah, that's, so Raj Martin, I'm going to, I'll unmute you and, okay, Raj. He seems to be self-muted. Yeah, he's muted him. Okay. Um, okay. Just to remind everybody, this presentation as well will be on will be available from the foundation website, so that uh, you can come back and uh, get contact information if you'd like to uh, to contact Andreas Slater as well. Uh, I have a quick question for Andreas since uh, we don't have a hand up and let people raise a hand. Andreas, I think uh, what you guys are doing is very very interesting. Um, I'm particularly interested about this work on the ISO TC 276. Can you tell us a little bit more about, about the activity, what it's intended to do, and what your strategy is in working with them? So um, my direct involvement is uh, on a work package which is called uh, data processing and uh, yeah, including annotation and an archiving of data. Um, this became only this year an international working group. It was a suggestion from the German but uh, delegates at that time I was uh, participating in, in the German community, now I'm on the Luxembourg side. Uh, the, re the, the main goal there is not to develop just yet another standard, but first looking out what are the standards which are out there, kind of grassroots standards, de facto standards, and try to, to, to see what is needed in terms of harmonization, if there are still gaps, and this is all for the moment related to non-medical areas. But on the other side, if you are to, uh, looking at the 
um, machinery or the instruments generating the data. So we are talking next generation sequencing, we are talking omics data like microarrays, etc. I think it's uh, very obvious that the same uh, instruments are being used in a clinical setting as well. And therefore, I think these uh, activities we do there in really harmonizing the data, especially in the field of systems, uh, systems bio, biomedicine, uh, will help also on the second step to, to harmonize uh, these uh, and standardize these uh, mich uh, outcomes and formats later on. And this should hopefully as well then uh, benefit to uh, efforts like uh, Transmart where we, we get the right information together with the right metadata and not have to uh, to figure out, you know, how do we get quality scores if they are not transported directly with the values. Well, that sounds, that sounds quite interesting and very important work. Well, I can tell you that I was quite uh, fighting for this one in my previous life as well as here and therefore uh, we, we got involved immediately. For me, this is one of the fundamentals. Not necessarily something you get the, the glory because it's uh, usually behind the curtain and I remember my old professor telling me, Andreas, if somebody asks you to, to uh, participate in a standard initiative, you know you got old and I hope this is not the case this time. Terrific. Uh, Keith, I noticed we have a question from Sylvia Jimenez. Yeah, Sylvia from TR. Uh, you're unmuted if you'd like to ask your question. It was uh, concerning the, um, the curation effort that you're making and I wanted to know what has been the hardest information to curate and standardize? Poo, this is a Difficult question for me. Uh, this, this I should refer to my colleagues. I think at the end of the day, the hardest is if there is no data dictionary around and if there is no real good communication with the people who basically produce the data. So um, if if the data is being generated with uh, under SOP standard operating procedures and there is a good structure uh, what the data means and you know like I said data dictionary available that then things are becoming easier. If there is nothing basically in terms of structure or ideas on, on even dictionaries in terms of what does a, a point mean then then it becomes really uh, cumbersome and, and a lot of work. And about the quality assurance as well, uh, how do you test your quality, the quality of the data that are coming in? Because that can be quite tricky. I think that um, if you Absolutely. don't have a good quality data, you can start drawing conclusions that are not uh, valid. So yeah, how do you yeah, yeah. assure the quality of your data? Absolutely. Uh, I cannot improve data quality. If I get bad data, I cannot make this necessarily good data all in a sudden with a magic magic spell. Um, there are some guidelines from the eTrix consortium already out, uh, you know, how how good data could look like and what we can do is definitely say if the data is harmonized, if there is within the data uh, a lot of outliers or missing values or, or improper statements and then these kind of things. So we do get a feeling uh, if the data is being in that sense messy because it's not harmonized. On the other side, if the machine is spitting out real numbers or not, to some extent we have to trust our colleagues of course. We are not going back and say here's a, a standardized uh, data set, run it through your machinery and we do see what comes out and with this golden standard we can say this is good data or bad data. This would be perfect but it's not the case. Now having said this, what we started or the colleagues in Luxembourg started is getting closer to the machinery producing the data. And the closer you get to the uh, machines, the closer you get really to the SOPs, how the data is being generated, the more you can then later on also say it's good quality data. So for example, if you provide people only with an option to, to select a text or a string from a pull down menu and not enter free text, then of course your data you're generating at the end of the day is much better quality. So it's a little bit of trying to solve this issue softly by educating, training uh, the people and also if possible if the projects allow also to have a bit more stringent um, pr uh, yeah, approach towards how data is being captured and, and in which sense data is being captured. Does it help and, and answer your question? Yes, thank you. Thank you. And Sylvia, okay. just so you know, um, Andreas mentioned the eTrix um, data curation guidelines. That's one of the uh, uh, documents that's linked to on the new wiki on the uh, ETL page. So, um, And it's recently been uh, published, so I encourage people to, to have a look at that. 
Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Keith, I noticed that uh, Gil Oman, our chairman, had as a question. Yep. Uh, Gil, I'm going to unmute you as well. Um, so the question from Gil is, uh, doesn't 1.2.5 require a lot of further work before release? Um, Terry, I'm going to unmute you as well. Let's let Gil see if he wants to expand on that question. Okay. No, I, I, you know, it's our first. Hello to everybody. It's been a very productive call. Thank you for all the progress. Um, I was just uh, reacting to the way I thought mothers might, that it's already November and the first quarter is soon upon us. Sounded like there are quite a few things to fix for that uh, 1.2.5 release. I realize it's not new functionalities, but in the past, Terry, we've had uh, quite a lot of effort to uh, clear up bugs and fix things. I just didn't want to uh, miss the first target date for uh, uh, a date thing to release. I think those are very good points, and, and Gil, as the as the chair of the of the Transmart Project Management Committee, um, let me say that the the Project Management Committee has been very well aware of some of these issues. We uh, we were not really aware of the install issues, which we're now working on fixing, uh, actually with the 1.2.4 release uh, materials. So before the 1.2.5 comes out, you will see updated installation um, uh, process and description and documentation uh, for that which will then be further enhanced for the 1.2.5 release. Uh, with the 1.2.5 release, we've been focusing on uh, key quality uh, processes that uh, we've been implementing. So, for example, we've, uh, we've built a new master branch uh, on the, the, the foundation's GitHub uh, to make sure that we are, are not um, getting random uh, commits. We've uh, defined a new committer process and identified key committers uh, that are working with that process and our gatekeepers to the code base. Uh, this is very much the way uh, Linux Foundation, Apache Foundation, other foundations work uh, with their code base. Uh, the key commit rules that we've implemented in this process are, for example, an individual developer can't commit their own code uh, to the master branch. That has to be committed through another developer, even if that person is an authorized committer. Uh, that means there's a peer review process that's implemented as a part of every commit to the, to the code base. Uh, there are other key aspects that we were implementing there as well. So uh, with respect to the 1.2.5, uh, we see this coming out uh, in first quarter. We're in alpha testing right now. Uh, as soon as we complete that, we'll go to beta testing. But I think we're, we'll, we'll easily need a, a mid uh, first quarter of 2016 release uh, for that. Uh, so it's on track, Gil. There's a lot of work going on the engineering process. We've integrated John O'Hara into the process, and he's now part of the project management committee. Uh, but I think it's, uh, you know, everything is pretty well on track to give us what should be the highest quality release uh, in materials uh, for Transmark ever as the 1.2.5 release in, in first quarter. Thank you. Good. Okay. Um, and on a, a similar note, uh, also related to 1.2.5, we have a question from Devin Utnor. Uh, how, many de how many developers are working on the next release and where are they located? Devin, do you want to... Elaborate. Well, let me just address that quickly while uh, Devin may unmute He's or muted. not. It looks like uh, uh, okay. there's an audio pen that has to be done there. Anyway, um, with respect to 1.2.5, the bug fixing is being predominantly done by uh, foundation developers, so Terry and uh, Terry Weymouth and Peter Rice are doing a lot of that work. That's augmented by some ongoing work um, at the Hive uh, that's sponsored by uh, CTMM uh, and others, and at Imperial College that's sponsored by uh, Etrix um, uh, and others. Uh, but that's that's uh, it's a small number of people that are working on the 1.2.5 release. Uh, with respect to the 1.3, which we're looking at a third quarter 16, the, the next six-month release, uh, there's a lot of active development work happening there at Imperial College, at the Hive, uh, and at other key uh, sites. Uh, I couldn't give you an exact number of how many people are working on that, uh, but we're, we're in the process of getting our hands further around that as there's a number of developments that people want to bring into this. I also point out that there's some uh, key work going on on integration of uh, potential integration of Smart R. Uh, which is a development coming out of the University of Luxembourg uh, as part of their work with eTrix. And to the to the presentation that uh, that, that Keith Nangle made as well, 
Um, one of the key things the foundation is focusing on is the engineering process that it takes uh, to make uh, the platform commercial grade. Uh, that's not a lot of the innovative development that's happening in the community that's uh, at places like the Hive and Imperial and Luxembourg, but it's really focusing on the engineering aspects, the quality systems, the quality processes uh, that we're implementing to ensure that we can improve the reliability and stability of that code base as we go forward. Uh, I'm really excited about John's in, uh, involvement in this process. Uh, he has experience of taking platforms from you know, two and three nines of reliability to six nines of reliability. And uh, there's a lot of effort that it takes with each order of magnitude that you add to that reliability score. Uh, so his experience uh, and expertise there is invaluable to the process. I think. Uh, okay, I think we've. Uh... Evan dropped on my call. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Devin, Devin's back. Do we want to see if there's anything oh, more that he wants to add? Unmute. Okay, there you go, Devin. Hi, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I pressed the wrong button before I could talk. Oh. I was on mute. But uh, there are a couple of questions uh, in relation to that. Uh, uh, one is to really understand what kind of development needs. Uh, this platform has going forward, meaning I had a very small exchange with Terry some time ago to understand the skill sets we need for moving this platform forward. And secondly, if there is a way we can coordinate the activities for development, I was interested in knowing what that coordination looks like. So with respect to the, the, the kinds of needs, uh, there are basically two areas that, that are, are of focus with the with Transmart platform development today. Uh, one is on uh, quality engineering and processes. Um, that is to improve the quality and, and stability and commercial grade of the platform. So including things like documentation, install processes, uh, automated test and build processes. We want to get to the point where um, all the code that we have uh, goes through a nightly uh, build and test cycle. Um, which is not the current case with the platform. That takes a fair amount of engineering to do that. So there's uh, quality design and engineering that goes into that process. Um, there's also, uh, on the documentation side, some technical design and, and documentation that's, that goes into that. Uh, with respect to new features and new capabilities, that's been largely uh, a community-focused activity. Uh, to date, that has been accomplished mainly through uh, individual groups working with uh, sets of developers to develop that new capability. For example, uh, the Smart R uh, capability that uh, we're hoping it's up at a 1.3 release uh, in third quarter of 16 is, uh, is being developed uh, working through eTrix, uh, University of Luxembourg, uh, The Hive, and I believe Sanofi is doing some sponsorship of that work. Um, that's work that the foundation is not directly involved in, uh, but we're certainly uh, involved in active discussions and and working with the groups to make sure that they are developing that to a standard that can be included in an upcoming release. So uh, when you ask the question of, of what kind of capabilities, et cetera, there, um, we are fully refining the roadmap. Uh, we're working with, with efforts in the community, but the foundation's focus right now is, is on the, the quality of design and engineering uh, to make the product, okay. the product more commercial quality. All right. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All right. What we also will do on that roadmap process is, as we as we further develop that and refine that, uh, that'll be something that uh, through the project management committee will be rolling out to the community and, and looking for input on as well. So you'll see more and more on that as we as we go forward. Okay. Thank you. Keith. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. We're just about at time, so uh, with that, we'll wrap it up. Um, let me just say that we have a busy rest of uh, 2015 and uh, into 2016. I really see a lot of improvements coming to the platform, so please stay tuned. Um, I'd also like to say we got a lot of good feedback at the annual meeting, but uh, just to remind people, you don't have to wait until the annual meeting to uh, provide that feedback. Please don't be shy about providing it uh, at any time. So. Uh, with that, I will go ahead and close this call, and uh, you can find the, the uh, recording on the, on the website. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Cheers. Thank you very much. Bye.